Now, I've never met Dan Levitard. Uh, we have overlapping acquaintances, overlapping friends, but I don't believe I've ever met him. So I try not to curse on the show because some of you have kids and you've said, hey Clay, my kids are listening in the car so I'm about to curse because I'm quoting uh, Dan Levitard here. Uh, he said on his podcast today that I was a quote shit stain uh, for my Donald Trump interviews on our radio show. Uh, and then he took a couple of more shots I think, whatever. People sent me the link uh, and, uh, and uh, we wrote about it at OutKick because whatever, people want to take shots at me we'll write about it on OutKick. But what I think is more intriguing here than Levitard taking shots at me is this is what sports media is. If you are willing to bow down to the far left wing agencies in sports media and if you are willing to kiss their rings whether it's players, whether it's coaches, whether it's teams, whether it's leagues but more importantly again it's the media itself then they reward you. They praise you. Oh look how left wing and liberal this guy is. It's so brave. But what about when a lot of it is just bunk? What about when a lot of people are out there ripping America and praising China which is what's happening in the NBA all the time. If you want to stand up for something maybe stand up to an authoritarian Chinese regime instead of taking their money looking the other way and trying to rip America in the process. So this is kind of what happens. When you are willing to say exactly what you think and when your opinion cuts against the left wing sports media mainstream people will get upset and they start taking shots at you. Now, I don't listen to Levitard's show. It's not a shot at Levitard's show. I don't listen to anybody else's show because I care about my three-hour daily show. I care about this show. I barely have any time to do all the jobs that I have. And so, to me, it's just a further credit of the influence and the scope and the reach that both myself and OutKick have that so many other media entities out there spend so much time thinking about what I say. I mean they really do. It blows my mind how many blue checkmark brigade members come and watch every show and listen to every radio show and they're like oh my goodness did you hear what Clay Travis said? Yeah it's the same thing I say in my house. If I set my wife down here with me right now and I said what do I sound like at dinner every night she would say just like you do on the radio. There's not a big difference. The reason why this show works the reason why my column works the reason why our business works is because I believe in authenticity in a profoundly inauthentic age. And if you were sitting with me watching a game I would sound the exact same watching the game sitting with you as I would on my radio program. If you sat down and had a beer with me in a bar I would sound the exact same in that bar conversation as I do on the radio. My hair would be better looking in person. Other than that I would look the exact same. There wouldn't be any difference. So I believe in a profoundly inauthentic age in saying what you believe owning it not turning and running from it defending it basing it on sound facts that's what I do every day. And that upsets some people. And that's by the way the reason why our audience is continuing to grow as rapidly as it is. January is going to be the best month in the history of OutKick. People are like oh as soon as Donald Trump leaves office you guys are going to fall apart at OutKick. Really? Because January is going to be the best month we ever had. And December after the election one of the best months we've ever had. I think it was the best month we've ever had. And so I just, I just think we're going to continue to roll because OutKick's going to be 10 years old in July and we've been rolling for 10 years. And the people out there who believe that who the president is is going to dictate whether you succeed or fail to me that's a failure of yours. Yeah, I, there are people that I believe make better presidents than others. There are people that do better jobs as politicians. But if your success or failure on an individual level is determined by who is the President of the United States then that's a you problem. If it's determined by who's in the Senate that's a you problem. I believe in individual ability and you should succeed no matter who the President is and no matter who the Senator is and no matter who your Congressman is. Don't look to other people to provide excuses for why you are not succeeding. Look within. This is one of the things I've been hammering for years. Ultimately you you decide whether or not you succeed or fail. That's it. The only hand you can rely on is the one at the end of your sleeve. And look, there are lots of people I wish they told me hey Clay Travis you get to pick a lot of different leaders uh, in the United States. There are people that I think would do a great job. You guys know that I've been arguing I should make every college football coaching hire. I think I'd do an incredible job analyzing the different 
uh, possibilities at college football coaching. I'm about to talk about college football coaching. I wish the University of Tennessee would come to me and say, Clay Travis, you've been going to games in Neyland Stadium since you were five years old. We want you sitting on our interviews with head coaches. We want you helping to review the resumes. We want you to be involved in making the decision about who the next University of Tennessee football coach should be if Jeremy Pruitt gets fired. Guess what? I think I'd do a good job. But it's not going to determine whether or not I succeed or fail. Nothing is other than my work, other than my work product, other than my effort. And if anything out there, regardless, Democrat, Republican, Independent, if you are using someone else as an excuse for why you are not succeeding, then that is a crutch. I didn't think I was being adequately compensated when I was working in sports media. Do you know what I did? I didn't whine about it. I didn't moan about it. I didn't complain about it. I started my own company. That's what taking control of your future is. And then I went out and sold every advertisement for several years. Now we're, you know, 20 plus people absolutely rolling and we're about to announce some new additions and I think you're going to like them. And there's so many different moving parts out there. Ultimately, all I can control is my work ethic and my work product. And I find that the harder I work and the better work product I get out there, the bigger and better of a success my shows and my company becomes. Go figure. Speaking of, so what? I wish Dan Levitard well. I've invited him, by the way, on my show before. Uh, I'd be happy to go on his show. I don't run and hide. I mean, people expect that I would. I don't. You got a decent-sized audience that's somewhat comparable to mine. I'll go talk to your audience. I don't have time to do every single podcast on the planet. I don't have time to do every single radio show on the planet. I used to do them all. That's how I built up my ability on radio. When I was 25 years old writing articles, if you sent me an email and asked me to come on your show, I was there. I did hundreds, probably thousands of local radio hits before I even realized that I was pretty good at radio. That's how I got into radio, by the way. Because I would go on and talk about my columns and then I was like, man, you know what? I'm a decent guest for 10 or 15 minutes. Maybe I can stretch it out to an hour someday. Maybe I can stretch it out to two hours. I do three hours every day. And the way I got there was by doing practice as a guest. So I don't have time to do that all the time, but I don't run and hide. Levitard's got an open invite on my show. Uh, I'd be happy to go on his podcast. I'd do a home and home. I'll answer any question. I'd expect for him to answer questions too. I don't run and hide. And I also, I don't randomly throw out insults, but he's welcome to do that. To me, it's just a sign of how much OutKick has grown that other radio programs or other podcasts spend time talking about me. That's how influential we've become and that's part of the par for the course. Farther up you move on the flagpole, more the wind blows, more people talk about you. I can handle it. 